Hi, welcome to a gentle yoga practice. My name's Kaylee. When you're ready, you can meet me lying down on a soft surface. You can use a yoga mat like I'm using, or you might be on any other soft surface. Once you land on your back, go ahead and bend your knees. Let your eyes close for a moment. Bring one hand to your heart and one hand around your belly. And then take a moment to let yourself land in the space, in the room that you're practicing in. Land in your body, in your energy, any sensations that you might be experiencing physically. And sometimes we show up a little bit of discomfort or pain. And you see if you can give yourself a lot of compassion and cultivate a mindset of hope that your practice is an opportunity. If you have those areas of discomfort or pain, to soothe those sensations a little bit. And likewise, if you're showing up and the body feels really wonderful, the practice is still this opportunity to take incredibly good care of yourself, to maintain that feeling of flexibility, mobility, strength. And then start to connect with your breath. The breath is our life force, our energy, our prana. We'll take a round or two of something called a three-part breath. So as if your torso was an empty cylinder that you could pour fluid into, like a vase, on your inhale. So if you can fill up your belly where your palm is, let the breath then move up into the ribs and then all the way up into the throat. So those three parts. As you exhale, relax the throat the ribs, and then the belly. So try that again. Inhale, expand the belly, the chest, and the throat, the collarbones lift. Exhale as you relax the shoulders and collarbones, and then the chest, and then the belly. One more time here. Inhale, belly, chest, Collarbones. Exhale, shoulders, chest, and belly. You can keep the eyes closed as much as you like throughout your practice. Feel free to blink them open at any time. We're gonna bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees part. You can keep the hands where they are or trade alternating, bringing the other hand to your belly and the other hand to your heart. Or if you'd like, I invite you to take a diamond shape with the arms, bringing the elbows out by the sides of the ears, and then bringing the index finger and the thumb to connect right over the crown of the head. You might choose to flatten the back of the wrists onto the surface of the floor that you're practicing on, and the hands may also lift up a little bit here. Whatever feels most comfortable for you is great. Once you land, See if you can come back to that breathing pattern. So taking those long inhales, filling up the belly, the chest, the throat. And exhale back down the throat, the chest, and the belly. You have the hands on your belly or your heart. Go ahead and reach the arms back up. Interlace your fingers and press the palms toward the wall behind you or the space behind you. Find a stretch in the underarms. See if you can lengthen your lower back downward toward the floor. So you're stretching through the sides of the hip, the sides of the waist, lengthen out. Take a big breath in. And then as you exhale, grab hold of your knees and hug the knees into your chest. From here, you can draw some little circles. Just move around in any way that feels good for the lower back. 
circling the knees around or walk, rocking side to side. We'll stay on the back for a little bit longer today. You're gonna hug the right knee into your chest, stretch your left leg up toward the ceiling and then circle through your left ankle. So really move through your left foot and ankle. Switch the direction of those ankle circles. Maybe you spread the toes. Really find some space in your left foot. Let's flex the left foot so the heel's pointing toward the ceiling. You might bend the knee a little bit. That's a lot on the hamstring. Take a big breath in. And then slowly with a straight left leg, lower that left leg all the way down in front of you until the heel lands. And then we're going to slide the heel along the floor until you bring your knee back underneath or your foot back underneath your knee. Extend the right leg up, circle your right ankle, spread the right toes. So our feet do so much for us. Switch the direction of those circles. And we tend to only move them in a very small range of motion. We even shove them into shoes, right? But they actually have this big, big capacity for movement, big range of motion. We're gonna set up a figure four from here by guiding the outer right ankle over the top of the left thigh. You can keep your left foot down here where you can hug your left leg into your body interlacing your hands behind the left thigh or in front of the left shin. Continue to let your right knee drift away from your body. And then just breathe into where you find the stretch. Maybe you soften the eyes if you blinked them open. And stay really curious about any resistance that you encounter, whether it's physical tension in the body or mental, mental resistance comes in the form of judgment a lot of the time. And just breathe, breathe into those spaces. And when we get into that place of resistance, we block off our own creativity. We block our life force or prana. And it can end up feeling like we're stuck, right? Like the muscles are stuck in a tense spiral or we're stuck in some other way in our lives. And see if you can tread really lightly when you find those pockets of resistance, but move toward them. Maybe it's just one deeper breath at a time. I'm going to start to set the left foot back down if you lifted it. We'll extend the right leg back up toward the ceiling. And then lower your right leg all the way out in front of you. Reach your arms back up over your head. So big stretch, left knee is still bent. You're reaching the arms back up overhead here, breathe in. And then we're gonna lift the upper body up, reach the arms up and lift the right leg up. So you can reach for your right shin or foot, squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. So I did say gentle yoga, but we want a little bit of action in the core, take a big breath in. And then both knees into your chest, move around in any way that feels good for the low back. We're gonna hug the left knee into the chest this time, extend the right leg, let's point the right toes and flex the right foot. So instead of circling through the ankle, slowly point and flex through your foot. Keep the right foot flexed, slowly lower the right heel all the way down. Keep the right foot flexed as you start to slide that right heel underneath the right knee. Lift the left leg up, point and flex the left toes. Go slow here so we're not in any kind of hurry. See if you can find kind of the little subtleties as you move from pointed to flexed foot. Maybe you're spreading the toes. And then we'll set up our figure four on this side, guiding your left ankle into place, letting the left knee drift away from you. 
staying here or reaching behind the right thigh or around the right shin. And once you find your stretch, come back to your breathing. You might play with that three-part breath again. And maybe you just allow the breath to deepen and lengthen. And gently move toward the sensation, any pockets of resistance, physical, mental. And giving yourself an opportunity to notice whatever arises and how breathing and just adjusting how you're relating to the experience can transform, right? Mind, body, spirit. If you hugged the right knee in, we're gonna set the right foot back down. Extend the left leg back up. Reach the arms over your head as you, what did we do? Do we lower the left leg? Yeah, reach the arms over the head, lower the left leg so you're stretching. And a lot of length from the left toes all the way up through the wrist. Keep pushing into your right foot, pull your navel in toward your low back as you rock the upper body up and lift that left leg, reaching hands toward the left foot, squeezing for three, two, one, knees to chest, bring your back down, rock side to side, massage through the lower back. Eventually start to rock yourself along the length of your spine, rocking forward and backward until you can land in a seat. So we'll find a cross-legged seated position Take a moment, so totally different posture here. Reach your arms up over your head, take a big breath in. And then we'll twist to the right, bringing your left hand outside of the right knee, right hand comes back behind you. So you can look toward the back of your space. Stay here, continue to breathe on your inhales. Trace the breath from the tailbone all the way up to the crown of the head. And as you exhale, draw your belly button in toward your lower back. Try and spin your shoulder blades behind you. One more. Inhale from tail to crown of the head. And exhale, twist belly button to low back. Reach the arms up, square the chest. Maybe you look up on an inhale. And then take that twist to your left. Long spine as you breathe in. Deepen the twist from the midsection, so from your waist, from your abdominals as you breathe out. Two more deep breaths, find length in the spine, inhale. Deepen your twist on your exhale. One more big long breath in from tail to crown of the head. And exhale as you twist. And come back to the center, reach your arms up. Practice your elbows this time. Pull the shoulder blades down your back. And then interlace your hands at your lower back. You're tilting forward a little bit to make space. And start to lift the chest. Maybe you send your sit bones back behind you. Lift the chin up, opening up through the front of the neck, through the throat. You breathe in. Bring the hands around to catch your shoulder blades. Give yourself a little hug. Round your spine. Curl your chin toward your chest. We're gonna cactus the elbows, lift your heart, take a deep breath in. And then again, give yourself a hug round the spine, switch which arm is on top. Couple more, inhale slowly as you stretch, go all the way open. Exhale, reach for your opposite shoulders, little rounding of your spine. One more time, big inhale, big stretch, finish the breath. And then exhale, wrap around, little hug. Bring your hands down as you bring your knees back, finding a tabletop position here. So you're gonna land in a tabletop position. You might bounce the hips side to side. In fact, let's try that. Bring your knees together, feet together, and then let the hips drop side to side here. And try and keep your shoulders over your wrists. Let's come through the center, bring the knees to hips distance apart. 
Find cow as you drop your belly, scoop your pelvis up, take your eyes upward so the chin lifts. And then tuck the tailbone under, pull your belly into your lower back as you round your spine. Try and press the front of your hips toward your elbows as you keep pulling the elbows back energetically in space. To get back to cow, untuck the tail, drop your heart, look up as you take a long breath in. Tuck the tailbone under, exhale, pull the belly in, tuck your chin to your chest. One more, inhale, find cow, big stretch to the front side of the body. And then exhale into your cat, round your spine, curl into it. Come into a neutral spine from here. So the ribs and the pelvis want to be in alignment, a little bit of engagement through the lower abdominals. And then drag the ball of the right foot back behind you, push through your right heel, and just stretch in the right Achilles, the right calf, so that muscular tissue in the back of the right lower leg, stretching it out, opening it up. Go ahead and shift forward so your shoulders are stacking over your wrist. Keep pushing into your right hand here. I'm going to sweep the left arm up and open. So find a twist to the left, rotating the ribs to the left, keep drawing the belly in for some support. Breathe in. We're going to bring the left hand down, pivot the right heel down. Maybe you bring your left toes back in space behind you a bit. Reach your right arm up. So find a side plank variation. Try and stay long in the low back. And then draw some circles with your right arm. Nice and smooth here. Feel free to bend your elbow. Go in the other direction here. Right shoulder circles. Just appreciating whatever range of motion is available in your body today. Totally okay to practice being happy with what we've got, even while we work to Give ourselves an opportunity to improve or grow or get a little more. Take that right arm toward the front of the space. Reach it way over, way over. We're going to shift on to the left knee and the right foot. So sweep the right arm back behind you. Lift your left arm up. We're finding a gate pose stretch here. Left arm's reaching up, tailbone's dropping down. You can stay here or at a bind, bending your left elbow. You can reach the right hand up to catch the left elbow, tug that elbow upward and then over. Alternately, you can keep the left hand in that position, but reach your right arm up your back and catch your opposite fingers or catch hold of maybe the shirt that you're wearing or if you've got a strap nearby. So we're just looking to create some stretch somehow through the arms, the back, the upper body. If you caught that bind, we're gonna come back to our open version here. So left arm comes up, right hand is gently resting on that back leg as you reach toward the back of the space. Take a very deep inhale. And then circle the hands to the top of your mat. Pivot the left toes back, square your chest. We're gonna float the right leg up. And then bend your elbows as you lower the chin all the way down. Lengthen onto both of your legs. So stretch that left leg back behind you. Ground down through the toenails as you find cobra. Option to hover the hands here. You also might choose to push the palms down for a stretch. Really keep grounding down through your toenails. Knees leave the mat maybe. Breathe in. And then we're gonna take a child's pose. Take your time, press your hands and knees, slowly send your hips back towards your heels for your stretch. Let the forehead drop down. And then just breathe as you notice the sensations in your body. A little bit of energy generated there maybe. It would feel good in your child's pose with your forehead down, slowly rock your head side to side, massaging across your brow center. Ajna chakra, that third eye chakra, stimulating the energy there a little bit, awakening your own inner wisdom, your intuition, your own inner teacher. Take a big breath in. 
And stay in child's pose as you exhale, relax the shoulders, the jaw. On the next inhale, pull forward to your hands and your knees. You can take a couple breaths to move side to side or take a cat cow, maybe some body circles or maybe you like to play around with a little different wrist release. If you're not sure what to do, you can join me turning the fingers away from one another and then just shifting your shoulders from side to side. All right, we're gonna meet back up with the fingers pointing forward, the wrist creases are level. And then this time we're gonna tuck the left toes and press back through your left foot. Find your stretch through your left calf here, left Achilles. Shift forward when you're ready so the shoulders are over the wrists. We're going to wrap, ground down into your left hand. Zip up your abdominals as you sweep your right arm up and open, twisting toward the right. Where can you create a little bit more stability? And where can you breathe a little bit more ease? So can you let the breath move a little bit fuller across the chest? As you keep spinning the shoulder blades to the space behind you, breathe in. We're going to reset the right hand underneath the right shoulder, finding your side plank variation, pivoting on to the back foot, and then drawing some circles with your left arm once you land. Let the right ear just dangle, release the neck. We'll switch the direction of those arm circles. Rotational movements through the joints are so good at bringing some of that synovial fluid into areas that get a little dried up. Go gentle with it. Reach that top arm forward for a moment. Find that big side body stretch. You're lifting that top hip up slightly, pressing the hips toward the left. And then we're going to rise it up to gate. Reach the right arm up. Lengthen your lower back down. And then just breathe for a moment. From here, you've got the option to find a tricep stretch by touching your, head, what is this? The right elbow with your left hand. Get a little mixed up in which arm is upward. Or if you wanna play around with that bind behind the shoulders. Let's see if you can soften your eyes, do a little jaw check. If you've caught some kind of a bind, come back to that open stretch. Reach way back with your top hand. Long inhale. Circling the hands to the top of the mat. Square the chest, pivot the right toes back. Lift the left leg. Bend your elbows as you tap all the way down. Stretch right leg back, ground down through all of your toenails. As you lift up into cobra, this time wing your arms by your side. So keep pushing down into the tops of the feet, pulling the fingertips back behind you. Option to interlace your hands, find a little more lift through the chest as you continue to press the front of the hips and the pubic bone downward. Breathe in, slowly find child's pose. So slow motion. And once you land, settle back into your body, back into your breath. And from child's pose, work your way onto your back. We're going to finish up with a spinal twist before rest. Bring the right knee into your chest once you land there. And then we'll use the left arm to guide the right knee across the body. You can tee or cactus your right arm. You can keep the nose pointing straight up or tip your chin over towards your right shoulder. And just let gravity help soften around the right shoulder blade. And let the right knee get heavy, whether it's on the ground or not. Mine's not all the way down, that's just fine. But see if you can let gravity help lengthen 
the tissues on the outside of the right hip and thigh. Bring your head back through to neutral. If you tilted your chin, take a breath in. And then unwind and bring both knees into your chest and then let your right leg stretch out. When you're ready, guide your left knee across your body, T or cactus left arm. Nose is either up or gently tip your chin over to the left as you breathe. When you're ready, you can come back to the center. If there's any other ways of stretching or moving that you need before you can land in Shavasana, maybe you meet me with knees into the chest for a moment. You can add any last little stretches and then eventually find a resting shape, whether that's a traditional Shavasana or you prefer to lie on your belly or your side. Give your body just a few moments at the end of your practice to absorb the stretches, to let go of any of that muscular tension that sometimes shows up. And maybe you acknowledge if there's some resistance to staying for Shavasana or to giving yourself permission to rest. Perhaps it's something that shows up not just on your mat, but in your life. And let yourself stay really curious about that, be an inquiry with it, and give yourself this opportunity to practice allowing yourself to receive, to take rest. Listen for my voice shortly to end our practice. When you're ready, you can start to deepen your pattern of breathing a bit. Maybe you rotate the ankles or the wrists. Take your time to meet me in a seat. You're really giving yourself a lot of credit for showing up. Staying curious about those areas of resistance, physical, mental, and those pockets where there is that resistance where we block our own creativity, our own wisdom. These are just our opportunities. They're just areas that are really ripe for growth. Be so gentle with yourself and acknowledge every tiny little bit of growth, healing, movement through those tight areas that you make. When you're ready, reach your arms over your head, take a big breath in. See if you can lengthen the spine instead of even taller as you sip in a bit more air. And then let it all go, open mouth, exhale. Thank you so much for practicing, for taking care of your mind, your body, your spirit. Keep taking care of yourself, I hope to see you soon.